going on YouTube? Uh, we're going to do a review video of the new Joying uh, head unit that I just received. It's got 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of data, and it's got wireless CarPlay. Alright, so this is a Joying head unit. It looks identical to our last one we had, it just didn't have wireless CarPlay. So the, there's pros and cons of these head units that Everybody's going to have a pro and con for an Android head unit. There's no perfect Android head unit. So we're going to go through the pros. And then at the end of the video, we're going to go through the cons. All right. So I haven't started up my truck yet. I'll show you my, my phone. All right. Uh, it's not connected to anything. It's not pair. It's not Bluetooth paired at all on the top. It's just, no. So we're going to show you a boot up of what, how long it takes for the unit to boot up, and then the Bluetooth to connect, and then for Apple CarPlay wirelessly to detect my phone and connect. So, it's on, and this has been sitting overnight. It's connecting. Sorry, I know the sun's in the screen. I'm going to move the camera in a slight second. So I just want to make a note. I use everything through uh, CarPlay. I had apps installed. There you go. I had my music apps, everything on the head unit. But what I was getting to is I ended up being very smart and downloading, um, getting a big... A big iPhone, so like a 256 gig iPhone, and downloading all my music to my iPhone because what happens with wireless CarPlay now, it uses Bluetooth to find and pair with the phone and to enable hotspot, so that's why it's blue in the top now. So it uses Bluetooth to do that. But once you're do, you're connected, you can actually go ahead and turn off your Bluetooth, even though my Wi-Fi is not on, the hotspot's on, so it's still gonna wirelessly transmit music. So if I go in my music and I would play a song and I the truth will set you free. So I don't want to play music because I get copyrights all the time. So um, it's actually Wi-Fi through a host. So what it's doing is it's transferring the music through Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. So you're getting the same quality as you would be plugged into a USB so I had asked Joy, I'm like, well, because I have digital audio optical to my uh, DSP, um, sorry, not optical, coaxial to my DSP. And I was wondering if it would transfer audio through Bluetooth. And I didn't want that because the sound rate of Bluetooth 4.0 is still uh, a reduction to Bluetooth 5.0. So I didn't want that. So I wanted to make sure it uses Wi-Fi. They couldn't give me a straight answer. So. I found out my straight answer by turning off my Bluetooth once it's paired and everything still works as it should. So it only uses the Bluetooth to pair first. And once it's paired, you can turn it off and do whatever you want. But I recommend keeping it on because once you do a key cycle, it won't, um, it won't repair. So I keep my Bluetooth enabled and I'll just show you real, real quick to do a key cycle. So if I did a key cycle, I can give it 10 seconds, whatever, but I'll do it. I'll turn it back on and it's still paired. So there's one con to that. So say I turn off the head unit. So I turn my key off and I walk away from my truck or say I'm just outside near my vehicle. It's still connected. So technically the, the track of music will still play. So say I went outside and I, you know, was doing something, get, going to a mailbox real quick. I shut up my truck off. I walked to my mailbox. My music's still playing on my phone silently. You're not, it's not going to start playing in, in live because it's still connected to the host. And then a full song goes by. And then I go back in my truck and I put it back on. I won't be on the same song that I used to be on. Unless I pause it before I turn my key off. Say I'm in a, like a really good song and I don't want to miss it when I get back into my vehicle. All I do is I just hit the pause button and then I turn it off and I come back. Another bad thing about staying connected like that 
is that I have a tablet in my truck, which is mounted below here. And uh, it's right here. This does a bunch of things for my engine transmission and tuning and stuff like that. And I need Wi-Fi on it. So the only way I get Wi-Fi is either when I'm in my driveway or I'm hot spotted to my phone. So I can't hot spot when it's when it's hooked up to um, when it's hot spotted to the head unit, right? So once it's hooked up to the local host, which is uh, like a its own hot spot router style, <clears throat> I can't go into my personal hot spot. Turn it on. All right. Uh, it'll boot it out, but then after a while, it'll glitch it back on, which I don't like. Um, other than that, I don't hardly have any complaints, um, but like I don't, I haven't found uh, a way that it really bothers me not to, because I'm pretty sure that this is the standard way that wireless CarPlay works among all head units. See, it just reconnected on its own. Um, that... Whether you have a Pioneer that's a wireless CarPlay or a Dacia or any other wireless CarPlay head unit is going to do this. Like, there's no ways around it. The only way around it is, I guess, if you do your key cycle and you shut it off um, completely. And the head unit actually powers down. But right now, the way joints have it, they, it's it's on right away. Like, it's it doesn't power down the head unit with the key cycle, even overnight. But they figured out a way so it barely it barely uses any battery power. I think it's like a hundred milliamps or something. It's really small. <laughs> but you could um, change that in the settings. So when you do your key cycle, it turns off the head unit completely. And I'll show you what that's like. Um, say uh, I'll disconnect from my phone. So I'll put in CarPlay um, the wireless head unit mode watch and then I will do a full unit reboot to show you how long that would take I'll put my Bluetooth back on yeah, the sun's just terrible there's nothing I can do about that so you guys are just gonna have to work with me once I start showing on screen stuff, I'll I'll make sure that there's better view, but you guys get the idea. So it's loading up. See how long it takes to actually connect and go through everything. So say you set it up like this, see it didn't take that long, right? So it didn't take that long. So you can get it set up like this all the time right so it's not that big of a deal and then as soon as you go to your carplay it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna search it it says access point not okay because it's hasn't loaded the bluetooth function yet and the access point yet but it will and once it does it'll connect so but anyways we're gonna get to other things so i'm gonna turn all my apps off yeah it's still connected um that might bother me so i'm gonna carpet oh, there you go um so what i used to do so i have app, my apple music on here so i was downloading music on my head unit because i have a lot of a lot of uh music and it was working great like it it works fantastic but the sound is no different than running my my phone. So I was like, why would I go in my vehicle, manually add my songs, download my songs, or sync them to my current phone playlists, and then run them through here? So it was it was like doing two things uh, that I needed that I didn't need to do. So I decided to say screw it. So I do everything through my phone now. Um, I used to run Tidal, as you could see in the last previous music uh, videos. Uh, the title, the only thing wrong with title is that um, it was getting really costly monthly. If you can, you know, have all the uh, the money in the world and you want to pay twenty five bucks for a title hi fi, um, go for it and you can do that. But it was getting pretty costly for me. So what I decided to do, I started to, I tried uh, Spotify 
and I was listening to Spotify for maybe two months. And Spotify was I had on the higher quality when I downloaded the music, so I didn't like the quality at all of the Spotify tracks. I can hear it in my in my sound system because I have my DSP and I have my my sound stage up top here, my tweeters and everything, and a high end component sound system here. So it wasn't very clear. You can hear on certain instruments, say you're playing rock, that some frequencies were kind of muddy, and I didn't like it at all. So then I went to Google and I researched, is Apple Music better than Spotify, even though the bit rate for the Apple Music is only two something, I forget what it was, but it's over 250, but then the um, Spotify is 320 kilobytes per second. They said that the ACC uh, codec that Apple uses actually doesn't compress the audio as much. So I ended up trying Apple Music and wow, what a difference. Like I'm not even kidding you, day and night. And I used to have Apple Music before I had Tidal. And that's why I went to Tidal because I was like, okay, it'll be better. But wow, Apple Music is crystal clear, way more better than Spotify. And I'm totally happy with it. Like I wouldn't go to Tidal back to title because that's how clear the apple music is and it doesn't use as much uh space in your phone because the recordings are under uh 300 kilobytes per second right so so that's a big plus and so the, it's got a good codec it doesn't compress the songs as much it keeps clarity there that's all i care about and uh, the instruments are, are clear as day um like it's just unreal so back to the head unit the head unit other than that um it does doesn't really have any more flaws other than that little connectivity issue of that it's been great to me um they had a firmware update that you had to that you had to do so if anybody out there is having a little bit of issues or a little bit of bugs with it get the firmware update and you'd be good to go but i haven't but i haven't even used maps in here like i don't even use navigation uh, it's, it's not even set up so i use everything through apple carplay and then when you go on, everything's through my, I don't even use the radio, but the radio is clear, 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 clear. And it even tells you like subrace pure country, blah, blah, blah. And it's got all the information from the stations. Some stations don't do that. There you go. Varied music and yeah, it's it's really really good outline they did in platform and data. Um, the EQ. A lot of people are still asking me questions about this EQ thing. I don't use it because I have my DSP. Let's see if I can get a better view here. Um, so I don't really use it, but. I will be in my Jetta, so because my Jetta, I'm not putting an external DSP, and I'm going to be using the uh, the actual amplifier inside the head unit to uh, power up the speakers. So that's going to be a great review video for another quality uh, sound that other people have been asking me about. Like, what about the internal amplifier? Does it sound just as good as you know digital audio output? And I can't really speak for it right now because this is all I've. I've ran is the digital output um, but if you want to have separate um, equalizers for one equalizer for the front channel and another equalizer for the rear channel you see it says all here that means that this EQ that you can't slide back and forth this EQ is for all the channels so that means it's for the front and the rear now if you go to setup and then you go independent adjustment of front and rear speakers. You click on. See what you just did up here? So now your front and front right, left and right. So now this EQ will control front, left, and front right speakers. Now if you swipe this way, see how it's going that way? Now you just change it to rear left and rear right. So what you've just done now is now you're back at the at the now you're at the EQ for the rear speakers and then you adjust it and then away you go so I just press default so it went back to all 
So um, I'm gonna do this here because this shifter is bothering me. So the EQ here, the Q and the frequency, people are asking me about that again. So the Q, you would then push the Q and then you want your width of your frequency adjustment, right? So if say your wave, if you want to really narrow it down, you could go narrow or if you want a wide wave to really overlap other frequencies, you can go and do that. So like say your Q here and you want it really narrow and you don't want it to, to kind of blend in with 80, you can actually take your Q and uh, then it'll be very narrow and then it won't, it won't hit like say, see 50, 50, 80, it won't kind of raise the decibels at like 75 or 70 Hertz or 65 Hertz. It'll just be like concentrated between like 45 to 55 because your Q is very narrow. If you guys don't know what the Q is, like just YouTube some videos, get familiar with how to adjust amplifier, uh, amplifier frequencies, DSP frequencies, and just just do a lot of research because this is like a whole another battlefield of things to learn about. Uh, once you get familiar with it, you can do it by ear, but I highly recommend you, um, this is what I bought. So it's an audio control microphone all right so what this is is a live rta so if you don't know what an rta is again research it because it's hard to explain to a million of people that watch the videos what's an rta where do i get it blah blah, blah. so this is the product number sa 4100i audio control go on their website research what it's for uh it plugs into the iphone so it's got a lightning cable you get the app you put it right where your driver's seat is and there's a microphone and then you'd play pink noise. What pink noise is, is all the frequencies at the same decibel level at the same time. And then when you look at your phone with the app, with that microphone, you'll see, oh, 500 is higher than 800. Oh, I'm gonna tune 500 down to make it level. Because once music gets to your ear, you want everything to be exactly arrive at the same level at the same time, right? So. You can use that RTA to do that. Um, the surround uh, face uh, space, I, I use it sometimes. So I put it on. I don't, because I am uh, digital audio coaxial output, the rear don't work for me. So what it does, it just constitutes two left, left and right front channels. So it'd be left and right. So that's my, my sound delays right there. So, um, some songs it sounds amazing on, and then some songs, because I already have time delay on my DSP, so it did, some songs it just doesn't, it, over time it just, is like, oh, it doesn't sound like I used to set it up. So some songs, it depends on the track that's been recorded. Um, bass enhancement, it's just like a bass boost. So say you want to uh, concentrate on a bass boost at 86 hertz, you would then put at 86 and add a decibel for bass boost to come up and you're doing that for front and then this one would be for rear and that's uh, what would be another nice thing is they've put uh, front here and a rear here but they're they're still working on a great uh, platform software right so you got to give them time and they'll, they'll get the hang of it same thing for surround should be actually called time delay and then once you put it on, it should be time delay, not surround space, and then rear horn surround strength. It's like, I don't mean they know by horn. Do they mean tweeter, rear tweeter surround strength? Do you add a dec decibel at a certain frequency when you bring this up? So, I don't know. I, I can't really vouch for this feature because I don't use rear. Because, like I said, my digital coaxial is only these two. This is just a balance if you want to be driver. It just balances. It doesn't actually time delay anything. Uh, then base filter. So this is your high pass filter. So this should be called high pass filters or something like that. Um, and then this one here is for the front. So you're adjusting this slider according to the front and then you're adjusting this slider according to the rear. So if you want to high pass uh, any frequencies below 36, it will it will go 
So like the average car, if you're not running, if you're running subs and you don't want your front speakers distorting, like they crazy at higher volume, I'd probably filter it off at like 60 around there, both front and rear. And then that would then take the bass away from your front speakers below that frequency because technically those speakers are only capable of playing up down to 60 hertz anything other than that you're gone from mid bass and you're now at sub bass so it's below that is where you want to concentrate your your subs to be at so then you would set them there i have all that stuff done in my dsp in on my audio control dsp in the back so i don't need to play with any of this stuff um the odd time if i find that the, the track's a little harsh I'll, i might bring down the eq just a bit just to kind of like make this at the track sound good for the meantime but i don't play with it um bluetooth bluetooth audio works great um i don't think i'm connected right now so Bluetooth audio works great. Like this is, the sounds pretty good. Three thirty in the morning, not a soul in sight. City's looking like a ghost town on a moonless summer night. So yeah, Bluetooth works good. Um, the phone stuff, again, I don't use the phone stuff because I have to enable show contacts in here. I've never ever done it. So this would be the first time I've seen it somewhere here. Where did I see that? I seen it somewhere there was a spot in here that I had to say allow contacts to sync uh, if I can't find it I'm not gonna spend too much time on it there but there is a spot that you have to allow it to sync There's also a feature here, um, iPhone, when your phone is nearby and you start your car, CarPlay will automatically start, you can turn that off and allow you to prompt it. So if you uh, would turn on your car, it, it would say open iPhone to activate and you would say accept every time. So if you don't want it to disturb you, like probably what, what's happening to me, I can turn this off and it will prompt me every time I want to connect. Um, but other than that. I swear it was here somewhere. I've seen it. It's always like that too, right? You see it. And once you really need it, you can't find it. Anyways. We'll leave it at that. For that section. Um, I got numbers there. To my recent phone numbers. Um, setting the... Pairing passwords. You can change it. Confirm. You can set auto answer so as soon as there's a call coming in, it picks it up right away. Change the device name uh, and reset your Bluetooth. So this uh, panel here, so the Bluetooth panel, this is where all your Bluetooth happens. There's no Bluetooth in Android settings. So what they did is they took away the settings in the Android settings for Bluetooth which I don't like because there's no data communication. So if there's any DSPs that you guys are buying or any uh, aftermarket device that connects to Bluetooth and you need data to control it. So like, for example, if you have a light bar and you buy this fancy module that you're putting in your vehicle and you connect it to Bluetooth and you can download an app and select on, off or 
a bunch of fancy, that's data transfer between a module and a module. You cannot do that on a joint head unit. So if you ever buy a device like that, find a device that's Wi-Fi, that you can connect to Wi-Fi, because then you'll you'll have better luck getting it to work, or USB, you have better luck getting it to work than um, the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is very limited to um, music audio and contacts and phone stuff. It's That's it. It's all that it's for. They don't want anybody using it for anything else. I think what happens, why they did that is because it would probably crash your phone Bluetooth if you did data transfer with another device while you're on your phone. So they're probably having issues with it and they just said, screw it, we'll disable Bluetooth for anything else except for the phone. And I think they have the OB2 uh, data link thing. Um, that's another thing. When you're hooked up to Z-Link, wireless CarPlay, and you're using the hotspot on here, you have no Wi-Fi. So if I'm in my driveway, I have no Wi-Fi right now to my house because it's using, uh, I'm connected to my phone for CarPlay. And it's really annoying because even though I close the apps, I have to go to Wi-Fi, turn it on, and it's connecting. So now I'm connected to Wi-Fi, as you can see. But as soon as I would hit this, see Wi-Fi is connected on the top. And it's gone, see? So instead of using, and that's, I had recommended to join that they do the Z-Link adapter externally. Because I know Z-Link makes an external the adapter you plug into USB. And that way it doesn't interrupt with the internal Wi-Fi of the head unit. So, for example, if they bought, if they would sell the external Z-Link wireless dongle with uh, just every head unit that they own. And you plug it into USB. Then you would be able to use the Wi-Fi in the head unit. While, like say I just click home, I would still have Wi-Fi. And then they would have another hotspot dedicated for an iPhone or Android Auto or whatever. So they'd have kind of technically two Wi-Fi's, you know what I mean? So they haven't thought of that, I guess. And there's another pointer that they can do to make it better. And I know Dacia is doing the same thing. They have Z-Link built into the head unit for wireless CarPlay, but what they don't know is that their Wi-Fi is dropping out. So the only thing that you could do on here that's Wi-Fi is on CarPlay. And like if you're using data, it's going through your phone data, so LTE. So I can still go on my Apple Music and list the songs that are not downloaded, and it'll still, you know what I mean, work on my iPhone LTE data. So that's the only con is there's no Wi-Fi. But if you were to clear the apps and then just slide this down and hit the Wi-Fi it'll then turn it on you know what I mean? so there you go um, the other head unit that I had the only thing why I went from wireless CarPlay from USB CarPlay which is this still has USB CarPlay by the way if you're don't pair your Bluetooth if you unpair your phone and you just plug your USB to the USB of the head unit and you hook up your lightning cable, it will still work with CarPlay. So if your Bluetooth doesn't work in your iPhone for some odd reason and you still plug your lightning cable, it'll still pick up CarPlay. Um, but back to what I was saying. So the other head unit, what I didn't like about it is if I was hooked up lightning cable to my Z-Link for CarPlay, it would then anything else that was hooked up to USB it would shut down the protocol for that USB so say I had a TPMS uh, module sensor a USB hard disk and how about another USB hard disk with music on it and then as soon as I plugged in my phone for lightning cable then I could probably show you on here
then all my all my USB hooked up stuff would be gone. So uh, USB ones, USB two, USB three, they do would just dis they would disappear. And as soon as I unhooked my lightning cable, they would still be disappeared until I actually went to the multitask screen and clicked empty memory. Then you'd see oh, oh USB devices are connected. So Z-Link has priority over USB. So with the wireless CarPlay, that's not the case. I can have all my USBs hooked up, which I don't in here because something I have to my USB drive. It doesn't interrupt the USBs that are connected to the head unit. So that's why I made the switch. And then the other reason why is because I didn't want to install a bunch of apps on this thing and just, it was too much uh, work to keep it organized. That's why I don't really have a, a different car uh, launcher because I don't really care about it. As long as I get in my truck and my CarPlay pops up every time and I have good sound quality, is my huge, then I'm not too worried. You know what I mean? So those are the only two big things. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think. Control. There was another thing here with control. So I don't know if I mentioned this in my other video. Uh, steering wheel controls. If you don't click your, uh, your check mark after you've done your your programming some buttons won't work according to what the symbols are so this here is my backup camera right so I have it programmed so when I press my one and it's because I'm in here so when I press my one my backup camera comes up and I actually have bird's eye view 360 so right now it's it's a separate system so right now it's recording the front all the time so when I'm driving anywhere I am, it's recording the front. So that's sweet, right? So if I want to see the back or the sides, so this is the back and then the sides, right? So see, there's a recording sign on top. It's always recording. Doesn't matter. If I put on this, it's going to record this one. But by default, it's the front. And then when I'm in reverse, I set it up so it goes to the back. So when I'm backing up, it's recording. And if I put my signal light on, I could technically tell it to come on and, and shoot this camera on, like the left camera on and the right camera on, but I didn't want to go that fancy because I have to put a few relays due to polarity issues with the, the vehicle's ground switching instead of positive switching. So I just didn't bother. So yeah, so steering wheel controls, if you don't check that check mark, like if I, that's the only one I seen that didn't work. So if I hit that, it was, and I press my one, it would, it wouldn't go into my back and I would pull up something else, which is weird. Um, another thing I would like for Join to make in the steering wheel control functions is this return button on the top. I would like this button to be somewhere here. So if I, if I'm on my steering wheel and I'm like in the screen, I can return back to where I was, you know what I mean? And that's that would be great for like say you're in a in a in a music player app, and I'm driving and I'm like here, and I'm looking at audio and I say screw it and I just push the steering button to return. I could return. Um, so that that's another thing that would be nice to be added on. Other than that, I have no complaints. Um. Let's see if I'm hooked up to Google Maps. I mean, uh, CarPlay. I want to show you guys maps. So when I'm driving around, I just hit maps. I don't, again, I don't use the GPS antenna. Um, and I just, destinations, I put in my destinations. I want to go, I want to go to Killarney, yay, go. And then the, the girl, she doesn't talk because I have her muted because I don't want to hear her. And then she just routes for me the quickest route, 3D. So it kind of keeps on an angle. Um, GPS antenna, I have it on the top here in the dash. Like I said, I don't use it because everything's through CarPlay, man. Um, there's another thing I didn't like is that it doesn't have support for Sirius XM. So again, Sirius XM through uh, CarPlay. 
I have to update the app because there's some little glitches that I get with Sirius XM. Like it takes time for the app to open on the phone. And then once the app is open on the phone, then it pops up on here. And then sometimes when you open the app, it doesn't really register. Another thing, since I have Spotify and Apple Music both uh, registered right now, i like to show you something that I didn't like about Spotify as well as sound quality. So say I'm on Spotify and I downloaded some music or whatever, and I go in my library. She's going to talk. I don't want her to talk. Um, I go in my library. It's like songs or artists or albums. That's it. That's all you get. I don't like that. So like songs, like if I'm driving and I like a song, I press like, yay, it goes there, but it's so unorganized. Like how does that even, that's not what I want or playlists. Yeah, I can make playlists as well, but it's not as feasible. So Apple music, if you go on Apple music, I can like Sam listen to a song and go up. What's up next. It'll tell me what's up next because I'm in songs. See, I have recently added, so I can see what I recently downloaded, which is great because say you're listening to some songs over and over, you have recently added. So I can click that and holy shit, there you go. So I can, these are all my top songs right now because it just added them, right? Those are the ones I want to listen to the most. And then you have your playlists, which I'm, you know, listen to your playlists, uh, artists, albums, and songs which is not what they have on Spotify. And I can just go by, like, say I want to listen to, I wonder if I have Garth Brooks on that here. But, oh, it's G for song. So you're alphabetic and you just select your number and it starts with the number of the songs. Um, so you can go by songs or say you want to be offline and you don't want to use your data when you're driving. You go downloaded music and whatever is downloaded, then it, still creates another background for recently added playlists artists albums and then songs um and then that's one thing that they don't have is songs that's so why then i could i can just search by songs whatever is downloaded on here it's all here so uh, that's another huge thing i like about apple carplay just um, if you hit car i think it goes back yeah um, I don't listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Even ways, I don't even think I set it up. Yeah, there's no way I used ways before. I've never used ways. I don't know how it works. Apparently, they have like cop detection on this thing, but I. People, I don't, my community is pretty small, right? So I don't think the people would concentrate on doing that around here. Um, other than that, it's been a great head unit. Can't really complain. Uh, if there is ever any bugs, you just do a system reboot, but I haven't had to do that. Like you would just slide down and go reboot, but I haven't ever had to do that. Stand standby mode. I think it would just turn off the screen. There's a night mode, I guess. Yeah. So if you oh you just want to take turn the screen off, you can just turn the screen off while you're driving at night. I didn't even know that. Sweet. Um, SIM card. There is a SIM card thing here, but I don't have the proper head unit for Canadian and USA SIM cards. So if they ever send you a head unit. Please make sure that they send you a USA head unit for Canada or the US. They sent me a head unit for the review video of just the box and there was an international uh, GSM. So our frequencies with international frequencies don't, they don't work together. So it's just like buying a phone from Hong Kong. You buy a phone from Hong Kong, your GSM is for over there. It's not gonna work over here. So you're, you're gonna be screwed, right? So just make sure that you buy a head unit and it's for USA whether you're in Mexico USA or Canada those are the only big uh, things I could recommend wireless carplay only comes in the 64 gig head unit 
with four gigs of RAM. If you have a two gigs of RAM head unit, 32 gig of storage, you're not gonna have wireless CarPlay. Um, I think it's just because they don't have the hotspot in the other head units and the other head units are more expensive because they added the hotspot chip. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that there is a dongle out there that has the wireless um, CarPlay. And then so if you use the other head unit with um, with the USB issue, when you hook up your lightning cable and you just add Apple CarPlay wirelessly with a dongle externally, it won't do that USB lockout thing because it's using USB to enable uh, wireless CarPlay, right? So I think that would work. That's what I'm gonna try on my next head unit in my Jetta. Other than that, I don't have any complaints about the head unit. I still think it's the bestest one out there because of the digital coaxial output and the fact that it's an Intel based head unit. It just the PX5s and PX6s I believe that just came out. I just the rock I'm not a big fan of rock chips. They just they're not I don't find they're that stable, but I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just a huge Intel guy. I used to be a big AMD guy. I still am sometimes, but I'm just been routing towards Intel because I just find that they're um they have so much better operating systems, I guess, and it's more stable. I guess when you write a code on an Intel platform for like, an, whether it's Android or Linux or whatever you're writing for, it's just a lot more stable. And at work, we write a lot of code for um, electric drives, so uh, electric vehicle drives. So yeah, we choose Intel for everything and it's just the, the way to go. But that being said, um, this is KNS Diesel, and we appreciate um, what Joining's done for the community and their amazing head unit that they've brought to us with the digital coaxial output. Like I've been dredging for this day for a while because, like, we all know that the sound quality of Android head units has just been like, <sighs> like it just hasn't gotten better. But with this Intel processor. The RCAs, even though the low voltage RCA, that's another thing I like to bring up. The low voltage RCAs, everybody's like, oh, you only got two volts or three volts or whatever. But 0.2 or 0.3 or 0.5, I forget what I was in my last video testing. But your amplifiers have gains. All right. The gains of the amplifier aren't a volume knob. They're a, like, you're supposed to match your voltage to your RCAs. All right. So I'm going to show you my gains of my amplifier where they're hooked up to. <clears throat> All right. And I'll even show you that my gains. Check this out. So, if you're looking at your amplifier, what do you see right here? Six volts to point to five volts. So if you're getting gains, the voltage gain from your your head unit and it's at 0.5, well crank this knob all the way to almost to the end, so you're 0.5. Like you have you're good up to 0.2 volts. Like it's that's what people don't understand. They think this is a volume button. They just say, yeah, like I want it louder. And they just crank it and they get a bunch of distortion. They don't know why their speakers coils pop after a while. But yeah, so this is what I'm running. It hasn't been clean in like a while. I still have like wires here from like when I used to run RCAs before I went to digital coaxial output. I didn't want to remove everything because I didn't like it for whatever reason. So um, yeah, so this is my amplifier setup. These are four dual four channels and they're really underrated amplifiers. I did a lot of research on these things. They're super cheap and they're really underrated and they're really good quality. So these are running my front door woofers and they're bridged. So this is my left channel and my right channel. And then my tweeters are on top of this one. Then my rear speakers are on top of that one. And then I have my Rockford Fosgate uh, BDCP 2500-1 under there. And then back here is my ported, my ported box. It's uh, two 15s and a bandpass box, fourth order. And it's in the back of the truck, so and it's ported at like it's it's a it's a bandpass fourth order, so they're sealed 
and ported so i think it's ported at like 50 hertz or something like that it, it it gets pretty loud in here more than what you need to be so i don't crank it ever up that high like there's the odd song that i do or i don't really want to party but um other than that i got the uh, type r's components in the front here i mean in the rear and then soon to be replaced is the I'm going to be keeping these RE uh, mid bases in the doors and I'm going with Morel uh, Elate uh, mid ranges and tweeters in the front here. So I'm changing. These are sound really good by the way. These are RE Audio Triple X. I have no complaints hands down. But I find these for vocal, they're, they're very muddy on some songs. Like once you hit like 1K or 800 Hertz frequency, vocals around that area. They're just, they're very muddy. So the Morel Elates, the Morel Elates, they like play down to like the mid ranges, the little three and a half inch, they play down to like 400 Hertz. And so I'm gonna cover most of my frequencies with the mid range and the tweeter, and then leave all the mid bass to the doors, which is amazing to have mid bass down below that, and then have the subs barely on. It just sounds fantastic. That's what I've been doing for a test route and it's been amazing um other than that i don't know if any of you know and you guys this is our come and swap chevy so this is what we swapped with the cummins inside of it so it's uh, this is pretty much our big fan page thing and then it's got two sunroofs from uh from grand prix and then we have a Toyota, come and swap Toyota that we're doing twin turbos on right now. And that's what we're uh, mostly building on right now as well. But yeah, so thanks for uh, tuning into this video. Like I said, I don't really have any complaints on the Android head unit. I still think it's a great head unit and I still think it's the top dog to buy. Um, some people may not think that, but I still do. So yeah, like, subscribe, and if you like our videos, comment, any questions, we'll tr we try so hard to get back to everybody, but we just, sometimes we just can't, um, so bear with us, and we'll eventually reply to you if we can. All right, thanks.